those uh, communities that are in development and how can actually be possibly have a role in participating to what they're actually doing at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation or anywhere else in the world. So what we want to show you here is how literally it's more about initiatives and looking a little bit behind what you see in front of your eyes. And we've got a, a very interesting speaker, um, Akil Soli15, a student, and is going to share his experience with water as a basic human right. Mm. Thank you. Imagine walking from the Bay World Trade Center to Al Safa. It's not a flat road or a paved footpath that you're walking on, but a mountainous region. And no, you do not have the luxury to stop to get a bottle of water to quench your thirst. Now imagine doing this while carrying a load of four to five kgs in your hand or on your back. Now finally imagine that you are only of eight or 10 years of age and you have to do this every single day of your life. Sadly, this is the reality for hundreds of thousands of people living in such harsh circumstances around the world. Sometimes in mountainous regions, sometimes in forests, sometimes in deserts. And they have to do all of this just to get basic drinking water, which may not necessarily be clean. Some families know that the water they're drinking is contaminated with germs, which can lead to diarrhea or other water-related diseases. But what can they do about it? Kids, especially babies, are the most affected by these germs. About every 19 seconds, a mother loses one of her children to a water-related illness. And there are almost a billion people living in such circumstances all around the world. Sad, isn't it? My own story started at the age of 13. This was the type of pep talk that my dad gave me to talk me out of spending my Eve gift money on yet another PS2 game. Yes, it worked because ever since childhood, I've been instilled with the notion of sharing and caring. So he introduced me to someone he knew in a telecommunications organization in Afghanistan, which was doing a lot of good work there. There was a particular project in which one could participate by helping to build a well in a village which for generations did lack access to basic drinking water. The cost of each well was $2,000. So starting off with that small EV amount which I had, which is a few hundred dirhams, I approached family members, my parents' friends, amongst others, and the results were extremely encouraging. The more support I got, the more I was motivated. In between, someone pledged an entire well. And so my story continued. And till date, alhamdulillah, I have been able to raise over $25,000, which has resulted in the building of wells in 13 different villages, which has impacted the lives of over 9,000 human beings. I guess the single most source of motivation that continuously drives me is that it takes 10 dirhams, just 10 dirhams, to impact the life of a human being, irrespective of whether you know them or where they live. When a well is built in a community, it impacts the health of the community. Children that would usually spend hours to go and get that water can now spend that time learning to read and write. Women can utilize that time to generate extra income and take better care of their families. So building a well not only provides water for the entire community, but also impacts the health, the education, and the productivity of the entire community. On a minimum, each well provides seven, uh, impacts the lives of 700 human beings. And that's why I named my initiative, One Well, 700 Lives. Throughout, uh, and that's why I named my initiative, One Well, 700 Lives. So what I'm trying to do here right now is that on, on a basic, on an average, each well provides 700 people with water for the rest of their lives. And water is a really big basic human right. So what I'm trying to do is get other kids my age involved in such things. And uh, there was a base, there was uh, last year, uh, uh, even though I've never been to Afghanistan, uh, even, even though I've never been to Afghanistan to actually have a first-hand view of the impact these wells have, it doesn't matter. Last year, I wanted to go to Afghanistan, but my mother, being the caring parent she is, refused to let me go so, due to security concerns. But instead, arranged for me to take a trip to northern Pakistan where people have sort of similar problems, both economical as well as geographical. 
there were four of us and we were teaching in a school and and we were staying with some of the people from one of the villages and I must say it was the most gratifying experience ever and it made me feel thankful for what I have. We were teaching at a school and we found out that some of the children, in fact most of the children, had to walk for an hour and some even two to get to school every day. Though they didn't have a water problem as they had found the appropriate solutions, this hit home for me as I was able to relate this to what the children in Afghanistan must be facing. And ever since that visit, I've worked on my initiative with greater empathy and a heightened sense of awareness, which is why I want to take this initiative out to corporates, as I know that their support can be exponential. And also, I want to inspire, not inspire, but I want to get other kids my age involved in doing things which inspire them. And for that reason, I've created a Facebook page called One Well 700 Lives. And inshallah, I also hope to pursue my higher education in this direction. Finally, I'd like to leave you all tonight with one thought. Each and every one of us in this room is blessed in hundreds of ways. The simplest act of picking up a bottle of water or washing our hands is a matter of fact thing for us. We never have to think twice about it. Yet, there are one in six people worldwide that don't have access to safe drinking water. Let us spare a moment for them and actually do something about it. If I've been able to do a small bit, just imagine the impact you grown-ups could have. Thank you very much.